Hey everybody, welcome to this video. This is um, all about working with Lightzone. Um, it is a free and um, open source application that I use because I run a Linux operating system. This is an alternative to Windows and Mac and uh, it's something I use um, and have used for many years. It's something I'm very comfortable with but we won't go into any any further with that. So what I want to do is open that up, um, show you a couple of files, um, a couple of workflows with that and some of the basics uh, of this program. So I'm going to open it up. Uh, it actually runs on um, Java so you need Java installed um, which is okay. Um, it just seems to be uh, a little bit slower than some packages but you do have the option to increase um, how much memory you want to give it. So by default you are represented with a screen like this. Now you can um, minimize um, any of the panels uh, to help you. Um, depends on your viewpoint. Um, for me uh, the metadata is probably not that important so um, it's a good idea to get that closed. And if you're browsing locally, like on the equivalent of like your My Documents, My Pictures, you can just come down here on the left and choose the relevant folder. And obviously you can go within it and we get a view of all our files. Um, so you can see I've got nothing to hide. These are from the windy shoot I did uh, on the uh, Saturday night, which I'm very happy with. And one of my favourites um, was uh, this shot here and this shot here. So what we'll do is we'll open up this edited photo and it'll allow you to see um, how the program works. Now it works in layers just like many other editors uh, and you can see um, you start with just these two layers. So if I just minimise these for you you'll see it only has these two layers, this one's always locked and this is how you um, adjust your exposure and temperature etc. So Lightzone doesn't use um, tone curves in the same sense other programs does with um, maybe an up and down graph. Uh, it's all about zones this program, hence the name. Um, it's more based around um, traditional dark room thinking where everything is a zone and you're going to expose or compensate for different areas. Um, there are some good benefits of this. Uh, this means you can totally edit your image to these zones so we can do things with colours, we can do things um, with exposure, detail, um, blur, saturation, white balance, um, colour corrections uh, and things like that all to specific areas. Now the downside to that is sometimes when you edit zones and change colours and saturation there is what you would see as um, like a halo effect or you won't see it gradually um, mould into the rest of the photo so you have to be very careful with your edges of where you're highlighting to make changes. Um, I can show you um, uh, examples of that so what I've done here is I've just added a little bit of contrast um, to bring this back. Um, now by default it starts up here and what it does um, you have different methods so um, depending on the effect you're going for, you can go in here and it'll change um, the look of it. And then you, if you're not happy you can lower it and things like that. So if I put that on, what you'll see is a very slight change to it. And if I try another one, So can you can see, and this is all going to be down to how well you've exposed your image. 
well, you can see the different effects it has uh, and it's you know um, producing the light where you tell it to whether in the highlights or the shadows etc uh, it is totally flexible we can do that with color as well um, and obviously all programs need white balance so what I've done is manually done it myself at this sort of temperature that I'm happy with um, I'm believing using white balance uh, for creativity rather than just correctness but the easiest way which most photographers do is select the picker there and drop it on um, the eye so all you'd have to do is just zoom in and then we could do it that way and I'm not my keen on that so you can see it's reduced my temperature I'm more happy with it at this sort of temperature and then we can just go back to fit and we'll see the full image so again we can show the tools on and off and if you want the raw data there we go we can see um, I shot at 45 uh, this is on a crop sensor f4 and 50 seconds with flash obviously it's not going to tell you what flash I used because I don't do TTL I'll do everything manually so that was um, a very modest uh, edit um, other things you could do are things like uh, rotation so I have corrected that slightly so the grids are obviously great for lining up against your verticals and horizontals and just click enter and that's that done so as you can see um, what we'll do is go through some of these options and you can see the press that and you can see the original done is when you finished and obviously we can rotate and um, you do have um, key controls so we can zoom in with my touchpad and the control button so there is that flexibility obviously if you use a mouse as well um, and what we'll show you is if we wanted to do so this is what it's designed around you can see I've got zones marked here and as I cycle through each tone you'll see where they are in the photo so this gives you um, a lot of flexibility to play with your tones um, and another good thing is you, know, you can do the same for colors and um, if we wanted to say do reds it's going to show you where the reds are the yellows greens and blues and what you can do then is you can increase the range so if you if you want to put uh, a little see a bit more blue in it you can do that and then we can start playing about with the shift of the blue in it so we can make the back darker by sliding this down Uh, we could expose it better so we can get rid of all that I just click in the X's and there we go and it's just going to go crazy there because we're merging all the tones into one so that gives you a little bit idea with the tones um, and other useful things obviously you've got a mode where you can crop it how you want and again you can press escape there um, now this tool is used so often because uh, let's say with a portraiture you might want to just highlight the eyes and make them pop a little bit so we could concentrate on doing a zone for a zone mapper um, just for an eye so we could click an area let's zoom in uh, I don't have the fastest computer so we can literally just drag shape of the eye out you can do it as exact as you want and then we can bring it back a bit a lot and make it pop a little and then we can just add another layer and do the same to the other eye zoom back out and see if you're happy with it <clears throat> um, and you have the three different options so you can do straight lines 
or you can do more curved lines obviously that's going to depend on what your subject matter is and the edges um, obviously things like architecture straight line is fantastic and um, I find that really useful we could use that for um, doing a bit of um, sharpening or just on certain areas maybe like the eye you want to bring out and again you can combine that tool and again you've got the blending mode we talked about earlier so you've got a lot of flexibility and obviously you can tone down the effect of the tool on each one as well and you can always invert it as well which is useful um, so the other things that are in most of these programs are presets now light zone obviously only comes with very modest um, presets it's not really um, a package that's used by um, thousands and hundreds of thousands of photographers um, Linux photographers probably only make up one or two percent of the industry uh, but it does have some built in now one of my favorites is high key portrait and I think this gives you a very good starting block like you would um, in Lightroom or any other package it's good to use one little thing and then tweak it to how you like now obviously this image had um, a lot of lighting around the face um, because we had the light source very very close and in some photos you can just make out the edge of the umbrella here um, so this converts to black and white pretty well but again we could change the look of it and quite often the multiply um, works really well and just tone it down a little bit uh, and then we have a nice moodier image um, you have to be careful of the backgrounds um, to make sure you don't affect that too much and obviously if you want to switch it off we can take it off and we're back to normal again um, there are several ones obviously for softening skin and obviously for the colour to help glow the skin a little um, and then things like landscapes and architecture really do benefit from things like the wow but this is going to bring back um, a lot of detail as you can see so you'd have to be careful around the face and skin but again you could apply it twice put um, your filter on and just drag around certain areas um, and then you could you know, just dial it back a bit if you want um, and obviously like any you can create your own style so all these changes we've made here we could say we want to apply this to um, all the photos um, from this shoot so we could just do add a new style where do we want to stick it probably in the custom and this model's name was Shannon so I might just call this Shannon Windy from that particular night and it's going to keep all the filters and by default it switches the tone curve and adjustments off so we can save that and then there we go we've got the filter there ready for us and we're finished we could do done and that will automatically just do save as its current name here um, light zone creates a very small file um, with the prefix there um, underscore lzn and what that actually does is refers to the original raw file so if you move your raw file you will not be able to open this because it can't see the original file it's a bit like a small version of it uh, it's sort of indexed for anyone who knows better so you just need to be careful with that you can of course um, name your roles first or name your roles um, change it and then obviously change this file too um, and obviously you do have the options of saving it that way so if we do it this way we can give it a new name and the other thing you could do is depending on the format we've got your TIFFs and JPEGs and we can manually specify the sizes for the photo now obviously this can be really useful depending on what you're doing with it I tend to keep mine 
on a low resolution um, because most of them are going on websites and social media so to me it's irrelevant um, but if you wanted to do printing um, and high res images obviously it's worth setting your pre uh, preference through here and then um, choosing how you want it to do and here look so you can see mine it is automatically set to quite a low res and I've reduced the quality for the JPEG uh, and of course in here I can create uh, my name and that will apply itself to all photos uh, when it's editing and you've got little useful things like how much memory do you want to allocate to it where you're saving your temporary files and where you're saving it to things like that so that's useful and uh, I think that gives you a, a good little overview um, there's, there's no point going into too much details uh, everyone's got a spot removal and um, heal sort of thing um, I wouldn't say it's particularly fantastic um, you can do a zone like that and then you have a marker where it's dragging the detail from so we could say you could double click it to remind yourself where it is it's okay um, I find this approach is not always the best because not all other parts of the photos are the same in tone and colour so it can be very difficult um, using this heel again it doesn't have the ability um, of things like Photoshop remember this is purely um, for a dark room type environment it's contrast exposures little things like that and white balance um, it's probably worthwhile loading up another program to do the really intricate things um, but you know sometimes uh, it works really nice um, and again I quite like high key that was one of my favorites and I see I've created quite a lot here which I use for some weddings because if we go back to browse I'll show you you can actually highlight multiple files so we can do multiple selects right click and then we can apply our style so we could go up to our Shannon that we created earlier and then I'll just process them three files it takes a little while but you know it's not too bad end of day this isn't a higher machine at all um, but that gives you an idea um, of what's possible with this program I've used it for um, three four years now and it suits my needs uh, I mean hopefully one day I'll learn a little bit of using um, Photoshop, top, uh, Photoshop type environment but for me um, this suffices for now so I hope that's give you a little guide to Lightzone and how I work and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Cheers.